problems are so big that you can only think of it in like a quasi-dirty way, that a linear, like engineering efficient route wasn't the way to solve problems anymore. So think of it like this, Brunelleschi wanted to build a big dome in Florence, but that gave birth to perspectival drawing, which was a great technological innovation. Design thinking has that same power now, to be able to think so big that the fat that drips off of the failure creates industries in themselves. My grandfather was a migrant farmer, and he worked his way up through the fields to own a lumber company that made pallets. And while he was delivering these pallets, he saw these enormous machines that these companies were making, and he decided that he and his brothers could make these machines and make the products better. He started a manufacturing company. My father took over as director of sales. They built multiple plants, and by way of a Sunday MBA, I absorbed all the knowledge of a community that helped him spring out of the fields and to make this. Make Time is an on-demand machining marketplace. What this means is you've got a bunch of suppliers in the United States that have excess capacity, machines sitting on the floor, not making money, and you have a bunch of buyers on one side that are fighting a huge pressure to get to market quicker. So we took idle capacity from here and we moved it into people's hands to be able to cut and make things that go inside cars, planes, drones, whatever you want to do. Fast forward, the United States usually runs at 60% capacity utilization on a CNC machine. So these parts are immensely important, but they fall prey to the cyclical nature of globalization, right? Boom bust periods of economics. So what that leaves is huge pockets of unused time. So imagine going in a factory miles long with hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment just humming with electricity that's going inside, nothing else. What we do is we go in and we say, hey, take that time, make it available the same way that you would a hotel room so that people can book that time and make the products that otherwise they wouldn't have access to these types of machines. For example, I can't afford a quarter million dollar machine, but I can get on my platform and I can make enough parts to make a car incrementally at a variable cost versus fixed overhead. One day I was speaking to investors about how the willingness of US suppliers uh, to post available time to our platform and they said, oh, it would, it would never happen. We implemented a new feature that made it easier for suppliers to do this and in a span of about four hours we became the largest CNC machine shop in the world. If you looked at a map and you looked at I-75, what it creates is a central nervous system for the supply base for American machining and we're right at the heart of it. The recent administration has passed incentives to the tune of $100 million to help Kentucky and Kentucky's workforce compete, not only regionally, but on a national scale, helping machinists understand next level technologies and the things that will make us competitive for years to come. Startups are beyond important for Central Kentucky, simply because the jobs of yesterday will not sustain both population growth and economic growth. In order for us to succeed, we need to embrace both our agrarian roots and our abilities to be innovators in fields and in the crafts and catapult forward to be innovators in entrepreneurship and developing new businesses by observing the deficits around us.